guys i am dropping all the tea i am dropping everything you need to know money makes money honestly for me there's nothing worse i can't imagine anything worse than trying to pay off my mortgage in the next five to ten years Hey beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amy with Just Do Me and today I've got a video talking about financial management. After one of my recent videos showing you guys about my property and how I was trying to maximise my income from it and how I was basically using that property um, as a business investment to pay off a mortgage and also to pay my living expenses now that I've moved to London. Um, a lot of you reached out and you said you wanted mentorship, you wanted guidance or you just wanted a video on financial management and I thought I would do that for you guys today. You know, you ask and it shall be delivered. So I'm not a financial expert so please do your research. I always feel like I do research with everything I, I, I do, especially when the money is involved. But I'm going to give you guys some of my top tips if you disagree. Feel free to share your reasons in the comment section below, especially if you've got a financial background. Help some sisters out if they're thinking of like expanding their investment portfolio or starting an investment portfolio of purchasing a property. Whatever you're thinking of doing, you know, we can always help each other grow up and grow up. So that's what we're going to be doing today. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate it. I mean, we've just done me. Looking good. <laughs> Definitely feeling good. I think you guys can pick up on that. I just really good energy in my new home. Hey, um, so yeah, let's get right into this video. So I'm going to start with what I believe is the most important thing if you're thinking about financial management, if you're thinking about investing and just what you can be doing to really make your money go further is your credit score. If you don't know what your credit score is, that is the first thing you need to do because your credit score is going to affect so many things, especially when it comes to purchasing a property, you know, taking out contracts, buying things on credit. You need to have a good score. And if you don't know what credit score is, it's basically a ranking that, um, a financial ranking that every single person who has ever taken out something on credit will have. And it's a way that lenders used to track whether or not you're worth lending to. So like, if you wanna buy a property, they're gonna look at your credit score. If you wanna get like a mobile phone contract, they're gonna look at your credit score. If you wanna like get a credit card, credit score. So you need to know what your credit score is. You need to know if you have any defaults. Defaults are when you fail to meet a financial obligation um, as regards credit. So if you took out a phone contract and you didn't pay your bill for three months, that phone provider is going to put default on your credit score and your credit file. That means that anytime you apply for credit elsewhere, that lender is going to check your file and they're going to see that, oh, but she didn't pay her phone bill. Like, that's not a good sign. We're not sure whether or not we want to lend to her or give her additional credit. So that credit score and that credit file is basically a benchmark and a guidance that a lot of in fact, all, I would say, all serious credit providers are going to have a look at um, before they give you credit. So you need to know what your credit score is. You should know what negatives and defaults you have on there. And you should know when they're coming off. So most things that are negatively affecting your credit score will be on there for six years. Um, so after six years, they automatically drop off. And also sometimes some of the things there are incorrect. So if you go on your file and there's something that, hang on a second, but I paid that bill, they've made a mistake, you can obviously contact the provider that's put that default on there and make sure that they update it because that's negatively and adversely impacting your money, whether or not you're aware of it. So you need to be aware of what's on there. When I bought my credit, when I bought my property, I think I've said before that I had bad credit and this was from university. Like I would like leave my student halls, you know, in June and they would still be sending bills. I wouldn't provide a forwarding address to my um, home, my family home. So I had all these bills that I never paid like after I left uni and they were on my file for six years. Um, and when I bought my, my property, I think I only had some defaults. I think I had two defaults at the time and they were coming off in 2016, the year after I bought my property, but I didn't want to wait because I was also like many reasons, but I didn't want to wait that one year until the defaults came off. So I ended up buying a property with bad credit, but it meant that I had to put in a 20% deposit instead of a 10% deposit. At the moment, actually, the year changed, I think the next year, so I probably should have waited. The year after I purchased in 2016, you could actually buy a property with only 5% deposit in the UK. So I was aware of what I had on my credit file. I knew it was coming off in the next year, but I chose to make the financial decision to buy that year and obviously start 
you know, putting my money to good use without wasting a year. But yeah, you need to know what's in your credit score because it's going to affect whether or not you can just go to a high street lender. I couldn't go to just like my high street bank um, when I bought my property because of the defaults that I had. So you need to know. But yeah, you need to know what's in your credit file so you know who you can approach. I knew I couldn't go to HSBC, NatWest, Lloyds Bank. I had to go to a specific mortgage provider that dealt with people for bad credit. And I was with them for, I think, three years um, before I remortgaged my property two years ago. I talked about it. Um, obviously, the default had come off by then, but with the mortgage that I signed on at the time, I think I was on a two-year fix. So in those first two years, I couldn't remortgage to another lender, even though my defaults had already come off. And also at the time I was living in Spain. So it wasn't until I moved back to the UK, I got another corporate job. Like they could see like no defaults in her file. She was earning good money that I was then able to remortgage my property onto a high street bank. So the negative rates, when you go with a provider that has um, provides for bad credits, they tend to charge a much higher interest. So that's what I mean by you don't want to have defaults, you don't want to have negatives on your credit file because you will pay for it in the long run. So I was paying more money by going to a bad credit provider than, now, than what I'm paying now that I've got good credit, I'm with a high street lender, my interest rates are much lower. So I hope that made sense. If it didn't, drop me some questions in the comment section. But yes, know what your credit score is, Experian, um, our credit score provider. I also use ClearScore, that's the one I use. I check it all the time, what's going on there. And I'll just give you guys some quick fire tips for how to improve your credit sc score. So take out credit. You can't have a good credit score. You might even have any credit score if you've never taken out credit. Take out a credit card, but please, please use common sense. Don't say just doing me told you to take out a credit card now you're shopping in Primark, spending all your student loan and mm -mm. No, take out a credit card, but watch how you use it. You have to actually use the card for you to have a positive credit score. Um, positive credit on your credit score you act you have to actually use the card they want to see that you're meeting and you're paying off you're meeting your financial obligations whether it's the minimum um, amount that you have to pay off that you're paying or the amount the full credit balance that you're paying every month they want to see that you're reliable you're trustworthy you're actually using the credit so there's no point in getting a credit card and never touching it and thinking that it's actually doing something it's doing absolutely nothing you know if you can get a phone on contract that's good but also always pay your bills on time never get, i used to be the type of person that like if i couldn't pay my bills you know i used to panic and i would just like you know you just hide the letters <laughs> if you've watched like confessions of a shopaholic i think it is um like she used to be like they used to send me love letters now they send me hate mail they told me i was a valued customer <laughs> You know, now they're threatening to take my phone back and repossess my car, that kind of stuff. But I used to get so terrified, I would just hide the letters away. Never do that. You need to know what you're behind on and you need to contact that credit provider and say, look, for this reason, maybe you lost your job, maybe you've got some additional stress due to family, um, you know, I'm not able to make my usual payments, but what I can do is pay this amount every month, we set up a payment plan and you guys will get paid. That, every single provider will accept that. In fact, by law, they are required to accept that. The law requires that if you've, they've been contacted and notified of a change in your circumstances, um, they're required to give you a, a reasonable payment plan, a reasonable payment option to help you repay your debts. So don't hide it away, contact them, let them know and offer to pay something. That will stop um, it hopefully going on your credit file as a default. They may put something in there, like a, a, a payment plan was set up, but trust me, that looks a lot better than a default. Okay, also CCJs, um, in the UK, those accounts you court judgments where, you know, maybe a credit provider has gone to court, you owe them money, they've had a, a court judgment put against you that will go on your file. Never let that happen. I think you have 60 days after the court judgment um, happens for you to make a full payment if you're doing it within the 60 days. It doesn't go in your file. 
but please don't ever let it go to court. I spent so long on this first point, I need to move on. Okay, just quickly on the topic of credit. Um, credit is a good thing. A lot of people try and make out that credit is a bad thing. My granddad always says, credit is the foundation by which modern society excels i don't know where he got that from but he's always telling me like credit is the foundation by which modern day society excels you know there are billionaires out there but if they want to start a company they're not going to put their own hard-earned business cash down to start it they're going to go to a bank with a business plan they're going to ask for a loan and they're going to say look what i've done look how i've made my millions i'm a good bet you know give me some credit and i will start a new company credit is not a bad thing you know especially when you're smart about your credit another good thing that i always say i think i've heard it many years ago and it's always in the back of my mind money makes money okay don't just put your money in a bank account and think, okay, I'm doing really well because I'm saving and putting my money away every month. No, that money could be working for you. So let me give you an example. Some people always say, like, someone sent me a message the other day about, um, here's a video if I want to pay off my mortgage in the next five to ten years, here's a video of how I can do it. Honestly, for me, there's nothing worse. I can't imagine anything worse than trying to pay off my mortgage in the next five to 10 years. It's because people have this idea that um, having a mortgage or having credit out, you know, is a bad thing. No, 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 no. Why would I give 200,000 pounds, you know, to my bank? when I can use that 200,000 pounds in the next five to 10 years and like start this business, start this business, start this business and make my money work for me. You know, I'm not gonna just, no, that's not how good financial planning works. So if you're a financier, please comment me in the comment section below, but I'm very like, I believe in this strongly. Let me give you an example. So let's say, and man A and man B both have 200,000 pounds. Man A decides he wants to buy a property, but he doesn't want to have any debts, he doesn't want to have any credit. So he puts down cash, buys one property, he's happy as hell. He's going to live here now for the rest of his life or whatever. In 20 years time, that property has doubled in value. It's now worth 400,000 pounds. Man A is happy as hell. His money doubled in value. Property usually does that in 20 years time. Usually, if you do well. You know, man B, same 200,000, but he decided, hang on a second, I'm going to make my money work. Instead of buying one property, I'm going to get out five mortgages and buy five properties. Usually, I think um, it's 25% deposit you need um, when you're buying buy to let. So if it's not your residential home, obviously you can't live in five properties. You'll have to pay 25% deposit as opposed to 5% if it's a domestic residence. Um, so yeah, man A, one property under 20 years. Man B, which is doubled, man B, five properties end of 20 years. They've all doubled, all fully paid off in those 20 years' time. So man A has one property worth 400,000, man B has five properties worth 400,000. Like, man B is a damn millionaire. <laughs> you know, he's got two million. A, 400,000, B, two million. So, like, do not be scared of credits. If you can meet your financial obligations, if you can make sure those five properties are rented out, your mortgages are being paid every month. In the long run, you're going to be far better, in a far better financial situation than the person who just put his money in one place and just like waited, waited, waited. Money makes money. Don't let your money just sit in one place. Put it out there and let it work for you. On that note, let's talk about multiple streams of income. My God, does like the world glorify multiple streams of income. And trust me, it is facts. Having multiple streams of income is amazing, but it can be really tricky. Like, how do you decide what to do? How do you decide, like, where to put your money? You know, I'm going to have to get my laptop in a second because I do want to show you guys some of the stuff. So my streams of income, yes, I have my property um, and I always made 
rental income from that but I've also done Airbnb every time I leave the country I go away a lot I'll have somebody in my property Airbnb you know um, I was even doing it last year I don't think I ever told you guys like um you know I had my living room which is obviously very large I had my bedroom I would have somebody from Airbnb coming in sometimes people that were working in the neighborhood and they would pay me like 100 pounds every week and I would just sleep in my living room on my blow up bed because your girl gas to get her coin okay so there are like little sacrifices that you will have to make but in the long run you're making more money it is what it is so airbnb for me is uh, another stream of income rental income but then for me obviously i have my youtube income but other than youtube income i have sponsorship income when i work with brands so youtube income is adsense when you guys watch my videos and you watch the ads for 30 seconds youtube sends me a check at the end of the month sponsorship income when brands send me jewelry they want me to talk about it or they send me hair you know but that's obviously very youtube specific but i'm just saying like different incomes that I have but also in the past when I've been doing YouTube I've also had part-time jobs you know that I have guaranteed income so I'm going to talk about guaranteed income um in a second but yeah lots of different income streams one thing that I'm doing right now and I will recommend it to all of you this is not sponsored by them there is this website called Royal Games <laughs> Guys, I am dropping all the tea. I am dropping everything you need to know, everything that I do to make money. So I hope you're not just watching and not subscribing. But yeah, so there's this website called Royal Games. Oh no, my laptop is dead. So this website called Royal Games, I will link it in the description box. And since lockdown started, when lockdown started, I was in like a financial panic. I was like, shit, all my sponsorships were gone and that was a large part of how I made my income luckily they started to come back but still at a much reduced rate um, than what they were pre-corona but I was like right what can I do I remember this website that I used many many years ago I think maybe after I just finished uni so almost eight years ago and it's not a gambling website so don't panic I, I never recommend or advocate for gambling it's basically a games website but they're all skill based games so if you're good at word puzzles or crosswords or like if you play candy crush you can earn money from playing candy crush and y'all yeah, if i go into um let me just go into my paypal and then i can see because that's how they deposit my money to me i can run through how much money i've won um i say one but it's still not gambling it's all skill based games um, i play three different games that i win money from word link it's a word game so again that's intellect what words do you know how fast are you also speed is a very big important part bubble witch and bubble saga so those are the three that i tend to use to make my money but if I go in, I show you guys how much money I've made in the last two, two and a half months playing this game. Like, rah. <laughs> you know, times when, when times were hard, this game really helped a girl out. Like, I just requested for them to send me £50 today. And when you put a request in, it usually takes like four four working days, I would say, on average. Search, yep, so I'm searching from March to currently. That's pretty much when lockdown started. Okay. So since, oh, I didn't even realize, okay. So the first check they sent me was in April um, and it was 176 pounds and I've had several checks since then. I'm just gonna like calculate. So they sent me 176, then a few days later they sent me 45, then 71, then 54. Then 91, then 84, then 60, <laughs> then 39, then 62. We're coming to the end of it. So 62 is the last one, but I just requested another 50. So since I started playing two months ago, how much is that? 732 pounds i've won since april middle of april to middle of june april may june so two months i've won 732 pounds and the funny thing about it is i love these games even if i wasn't winning money i would be there playing them anyway <laughs> so I, I i would recommend giving it a go i would definitely say because you have to put i think i put down 12 pounds you have to put money down first um, but when I put down £12, they gave me £18. And since I put down that £12, I've never seen my money again. It's just their money I'm collecting. 
<laughs> it's just their money I'm collecting. So have a look at it, like try, you can play for free before you ever put any money down, see if you're any good at any of the games. This is the three that I play, but there are so many games out there, lots of money to be won, I play it daily. Um, and if you're good, almost 800 pounds I've won in the last few months. So that's another stream of income for me. Obviously I do stuff as well with my merch. Yeah, so um, I can't think, I mean, think, obviously if you've got any skills, like if you used to do hair in school but now you've got a corporate job, there's nothing stopping you from doing hair, especially during lockdown. You might be on furlough, doing hair, doing nails. I've got friends that they have corporate jobs but they've also learned how to do gel nails. They do gel nails for their friends, they do waxing for their friends, multiple streams of income, whatever it be. By the way, I put my friends onto um, Royal Games as well. They have not sponsored me, but i I got to share the love. I said to you guys, I would talk about guaranteed versus occasional versus passive income. It's very important to understand that these different types of income. So if you've got a corporate job, um, you will have a salary every month that is guaranteed. If you go to work, they will pay you, let's just say it's 3,000 pounds. So every month you're guaranteed the 3,000 pounds. That's amazing. Now, if you have Airbnb, that's not guaranteed money. That's depending on whether or not somebody decides to book your room, you know, so you may have an additional 500 pounds from Airbnb, but that's not guaranteed. That's occasional income. But once you get to a point where, you know, you've been doing it for a few months, you know, roughly like my worst month, I'll get 400. My best month, I'll get 600. So 500 is a good average that what I can usually be count on every month. So it's occasional income, but it's pretty steady anyway that's good and um, also nail business is a dark business that used to tend to be occasional income um not occasional like once in a while but just it's not a set amount every time it will change depending on how much business you're able to generate so i would always say it's good to have the guaranteed income it helps you sleep better at night being self-employed i have had days where i'm like oh my god am i going to be able to eat this month because my adsense income isn't guaranteed from youtube that's entirely dependent if i don't film any videos they will not send me any checks. You know, or if I film videos and you guys don't watch the ads, they will not send me any checks. <laughs> you know? So it can really depend month to month. Or if I, I film videos and they don't get the views that they usually get, my checks would be a lot lower. So it can really vary. But I know usually that if I film 15 videos, I would get this amount of money. Um, so that's good to know. So it's, it's good that like I know if I work this hard, this is what I get in return, but it's not guaranteed if I'm sick, if I'm moving, if I'm stressed, if I'm like heartbroken, <laughs> no money, no money. And then also sponsorships, again, the other way that I make money, not guaranteed at all. What if nobody wants to work with me this month? Like what if I'm pitching to brands and they say, no, I've had those months where I've had zero zilch in sponsorships and sponsorships are my primary means of income. So even if you're doing your own business, you work for yourself, it is always a good idea to have guaranteed income. So I've spoken about possibly going back to part-time work. I'm still looking for me. I want to find the right job. But especially with like the fact that we're coming into a recession after Corona, me, I'm not counting on YouTube for sponsorships. I want guaranteed income. I want to have a part-time job where they're like, yeah, we'll pay you a thousand, a thousand five hundred every month. I know that's coming in. I can sleep better at night. I know my bills will be paid. So a lot of my work is occasional income depending on other factors, but also I have rental income. And where you've signed a contract, you know that that income is guaranteed. You know that um, those two bedrooms, the rent, so like from two of my bedrooms are rented out. 500, 350, I know I have 850 pounds in guaranteed income coming every month. And then from the third bedroom, that's occasional income because that's Airbnb. So I hope that makes sense. And then, so you always want to have a mix um, if you have multiple streams of income of guaranteed and then occasional. Occasional is not the right word, but I can't think of the right word right now. And then also passive income. Um, passive income can be both occasional and um, guaranteed and passive income for me I forgot to mention before I have patreon so actually let me just give you guys a quick little pop up I have a patreon account which basically means that um, you guys can sign up for exclusive content you guys that are patreons 
already shout it out in the comment section let them know the exclusive stuff that you guys have been watching and that's passive income even though i do have to generate content for it um the guys that support me on patreon nobody's ever like mimi where's that video you know if i don't post for two weeks they're like they just want to help me they want to support me i don't necessarily have to do anything to generate that income and that's what passive income is you don't have to go to the office you don't necessarily have to create content you don't necessarily have to work and that income is going to come in so it's like my rental income as well for my properties I don't have to do anything. They clean their house, they cook their food, da, da, da. I provided the property and every month they send me money and that's passive income. Passive income is a beautiful thing. That honestly is the only type of income I really want and that's why for me property is the best investment. I just want to have multiple properties and every month they send me money and I'm good. That's all I want. But shout out to Patreon. If you want to support me on Patreon, it's linked in my description box. Um, yeah, so that's passive income that you don't necessarily have to do too much. The income is pretty much coming in. Passive income is beautiful. It's the future. Do it. Um, passive income, another example is like my merch. Obviously, initial a lot of work, initially a lot of work can go into it, like getting the pictures, design, da, 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 da. But once it gets to a certain point where I launch, when you guys place your orders through Etsy, my fulfillment supplier picks up those orders automatically. You've put in all your shipping details. My fulfillment person makes it to the spec that you've put in that you wanted and they ship it out to you. It's a beautiful thing. I ain't got it on nothing. But I do always try and do like hand notes. Well, not hand notes, but I usually try and write you guys a little note. So that when you get your merch, it's got a little bit of a personal touch. And also on Patreon, when you guys join in, I try and send you like a little personal message. Just, yeah. So beautiful, passive income. So guys, I feel like I've touched on most of the things that I wanted to touch on. The only other thing that I would talk about now is planning for the future saving is a beautiful thing and a lot of times you feel like oh but i don't make enough money to save yes you do if you cut down on five kebabs <laughs> a month you'll probably have like 50 quid so whatever it is if it's 25 pounds you can put into your savings always have a savings account just a separate account that you can put a little bit something in also now I learned a beautiful lesson. No one had ever told me this before. I always heard people say, live within your means. Then I heard Patricia Bright say the other day, live below your means. And I was like, oh, why have I never done that? Five, six holidays a year, do you know, I could have bought my second property by now if I wasn't traveling all over the place. And I'm happy I did my traveling. I did it a lot in my 20s. Now I'm 30 and I want that second property. So I'm putting, if you see me traveling five, six times and the company's not paying for it, you guys better remind me of this video and remind me that I need to live below my means because I'm saving for my future. Always have your future in mind. Also, with regards to that, Pay your taxes. A lot of you that are self-employed, maybe you're doing hair business, nail business, you're putting your money aside, you're not paying your taxes, which also means you're not paying anything for your like retirement fund sometimes, you're not paying anything into your pension. Um, think about the long-term ramifications. I know, especially in the influencer industry, I see some of the way these influencers are moving, but it means that when you're ready to buy a property, you have no financial records to show the bank that yes i deserve a mortgage you're like yeah but i've been earning you know two hundred thousand a year i'm a very successful influencer the bank will say okay where, where are your taxes where are your records <laughs> you know think about the long term you have to you can't cheat this is you can cheat it a little bit but if you're not paying your taxes you're going to run into futures down um, issues down the line not even just a tax man coming for you but when you want to now apply for a business loan or you know a mortgage you're going to have issues guys if i've been preaching say hallelujah let me know your thoughts in the comment section below let me know what you put your money into that has worked out really well for you and let me know if you have subscribed or if you've watched any ads or if you become a picture of them. shout out to you guys i'm in me just to me Somebody, catch you next one. No, 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 no